Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about Monopsony. Not Monopoly, Monopsony. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. Let's get into the content. So let's go over the qualities of a Monopsony. Like a monopoly, there's only one firm within this market. But instead of there only being one seller within this market, there was only one buyer within this market. On the AP microeconomics exam, we focus on the purchase of labor regarding a monopsony. So within a labor market, you're going to have only one employer for all people looking for jobs. And as a result, there are no alternative employers within this market. You're also going to have high barriers to entry, and that means that no other firms are going to enter this market and compete for this labor. A historic example of a monopsony would be a mining town. In mining towns, only the mine employed everybody. Whether you worked for the mine or the town store, you were employed by the mining company. And while pure examples of a monopsony are rare today, there are still some areas within the United States where a single industry may dominate a market. And with that, you could have some businesses with monopsony power. So the next thing we're going to do is look at the supply of labor for a monopsony and how that relates to the marginal resource cost for a monopsony. Remember, there is only one single buyer of labor within a monopsony market. And so that means the firm's supply curve is going to be the market supply curve. It's going to be upward sloping and we will see a positive relationship between the wage and the quantity of workers that are willing and able to work at those wages. So at low wages, we're going to have low quantities of workers willing and able to work. And so if the firm wants to increase the quantity of workers hired, it's going to have to raise the wage to incentivize those workers to give up leisure time and go to work. And remember, this is different from a firm that hires labor within a perfectly competitive market. Those firms can hire as many workers as they want at the market wage. But for a monopsony, more workers will require higher wages for those workers. And since the monopsony must raise wages when it hires more workers, that's going to give us a different relationship between the supply curve and the marginal resource cost compared to the one that we saw with perfectly competitive factor markets where the supply equals the marginal resource cost. Let's take a look at this table here. It has the quantity of labor and the wage that these workers are paid. As you can see, the wage increases as we hire more workers. And if we multiply the wage times the quantity of workers hired, we get our total resource cost. The change in that total resource cost is the marginal resource cost. That's the cost of hiring one more worker. And for that first worker hired in this table, the wage is $10. So the total resource cost and the marginal resource cost for that first worker are both $10. But if this firm wants to hire additional workers, it's going to have to increase the wage not just for that second worker hired, but for both workers hired. So with two workers, we increase the wage to $11, and that gives us a total resource cost of $22. And the marginal resource cost is not the $11 that these workers are being paid. It's actually $12. And that's because the additional dollar of wage is not just given to the second worker hired, it's also given to the first worker hired. And so the marginal resource cost is greater than the wage. If we hire a third worker here, the wage is going to increase to $12, and now the total resource cost is $36, and the marginal resource cost, the cost of that additional third worker, is actually $14. And so once again, the marginal resource cost is greater than the wage. And if we graph the quantity of labor hired with the wage, that gives us the supply of labor for this firm. And when we graph the quantity of labor with the marginal resource cost, that gives us our marginal resource cost curve for these workers. And so we see that the marginal resource cost is going to be greater than the supply of labor. Here's what it looks like on the graph. We have our quantity of labor on that x-axis and on the y-axis we have the wage. Let's put in our upward sloping supply of labor. That's both the market supply and the firm supply of labor. And for the firm we have a higher marginal resource cost. And that's because as the firm hires more workers, wages increase on all workers hired. That's why we have that marginal resource cost higher than the supply curve here. Next, we're going to talk about a monopsony's demand for labor. And once again, we have a table here. Here we have the quantity of labor hired and the marginal revenue for the units this firm produces. Most of the time, this is going to be the same thing as the price of the product because most firms on your AP microeconomics exam will be selling their products in a perfectly competitive market. And there, the price and the marginal revenue are equal. The demand curve for labor comes from the marginal revenue product of the workers that are hired. The marginal revenue product is the marginal revenue times the marginal product of the last worker hired. 
For our first worker on that table, the marginal revenue is 10 and the marginal product of that worker is nine. So the marginal revenue product is $90. For our second worker, we have $130 worth of marginal revenue product. That's 10 times 13. And then for our third worker, we have 10 marginal product times the $10 marginal revenue, and that gives us $100 worth of marginal revenue product. There's the rest of them there for us, and that shows every marginal revenue product for each quantity of workers hired. And so when we graph it out, that quantity of labor graphed with the marginal revenue product gives our demand for labor, which is equal to the marginal revenue product for this firm's workers. And so that marginal revenue product curve is the firm's demand curve because the marginal revenue product is the most this firm would be willing to pay for that quantity of workers hired. If we put it on the graph, we're going to have a downward sloping demand for labor, and that will be equal to the marginal revenue product. And that's because like all demand curves, there's an inverse relationship between the price, in this case, the wage and the quantity demanded. That gives us the downward sloping curve. At high wages, we have low quantities of workers hired, and at low wages, we have higher quantities of workers hired. So we're going to take that downward sloping demand curve and add it to the graph we've already started with our supply curve and marginal resource cost above that supply curve. That gives us a downward sloping demand. And those are all three curves you're going to need to put on this graph when you draw it out. All right, now let's go over how we're going to make this graph from start to finish. First off, we're going to have our axes. The quantity is down there on that X axis and the wage is on that Y axis. We're going to first put in our supply of labor with our marginal resource cost above and our downward sloping marginal revenue product. Now, just like a firm in a perfectly competitive factor market, this firm is going to hire the quantity where the marginal revenue product equals the marginal resource cost. So we find that point right there, drop down. That is the quantity this monopsony is going to hire. Now, when it comes to the wage that's going to be paid, that supply curve below the MRC equals MRP intersection is where we are going to find the wage this monopsony will pay. And that's because the supply shows the wage that workers are willing to accept for that quantity of workers. Head over to the Y axis, and that is the wage that this monopsony is going to hire. Next, we're going to compare a monopsony to a perfectly competitive factor market. The quantity hired and the wage are found at the intersection of the supply and demand. This is a perfectly competitive market, and we can turn it into a monopsony by adding a marginal resource cost above that supply and remembering that the demand curve there is the marginal revenue product of these workers. This firm is going to hire where the MRP equals MRC and pay a wage that is down there at the supply curve. And so we can see that a monopsony is going to pay lower wages and hire fewer workers than a perfectly competitive market would. And as a result, we are going to have some dead weight loss. And if we had numbers here, you could calculate the area of that triangle to get the value of the dead weight loss. Next, we're going to take a look at the impact of a minimum wage on a monopsony. Now, remember, in a perfectly competitive factor market, an effective minimum wage will actually decrease the number of workers hired and cause some unemployment. But that isn't necessarily going to be the case when it comes to a minimum wage on a monopsony. If the government imposed a minimum wage that was equal to a competitive market wage for this market, we would find that minimum wage at the intersection of the demand and supply there. At that minimum wage, the first workers hired would actually have a marginal resource cost that is equal to that minimum wage because each additional worker would cost the minimum wage. But once that minimum wage hits the supply curve, the marginal resource cost will shoot upward joining the marginal resource cost where it was before. And so with a minimum wage, this curve, that yellow one right there, would be the marginal resource cost for this monopsony with that minimum wage. And so with a minimum wage, that yellow line is now our marginal resource cost. It makes our marginal resource cost horizontal until it hits the supply curve. So now we have a new MRC equals MRP quantity, and that is found right there. With that minimum wage, we will actually see both the wages and the quantity of workers hired increase. If the government imposed a minimum wage that fell anywhere between the monopsony minimum wage and the marginal resource cost, any of those wages in between those two would actually increase the quantity hired and the wages paid. All right, now that's everything you need to know about Bonopsony for your AP Microeconomics exam. If you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.